Now, I uh, dumpstered them. The one guy killed himself with his own impact grenade, and I... Uh, not like I'd never gotten so toxic in my life after I killed a guy. I was like, you are the scum of the air. Like I was so happy I killed him because the only outplay, the, the only way you outplay an impact grenade is step one, sacrifice your teammate because then you know they have impact grenades. It, it's, this is, this is it. I'm going to make a YouTube video incoming. No, not really. Sacrifice your teammate so you know they have impact grenades and you know that they can't already have the, the pin pre-pulled. Step two, it, it takes long enough for them to take the second grenade out and throw it again that you just rush them and they're dead. Step two, when you hear the pin pull, just rush them. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the podcast, the show dedicated to talking about all the poggers things in life, like music, content creation, and video games. I am Jesse Kazam, one of your co-hosts. And I'm Veritas, and there's no more monkey business. No more monkey business. That's ser it's super serial. 12 monkey business. It's just, yep. <laughs> super serial hours these days right now for okay. serial we yeah. only game that's all life is gotta get kappa first <clears throat> Bro, we, well, we only like... we only game and we <coughs> when we have to shoot things irl mm, yeah did you see there's like six people with cap already that's unreal that's a lot of time i mean it's a lot of time I... and a lot of skill like if I didn't, if I hadn't slept from wipe day until now, I think I'd only be level like 50 <laughs> and you need to be 62. Like you got to win your raids and shoot a lot of things to get that okay, much. XP. So that, that actually reminds me of something that maybe <clears throat> is worth opening with. Okay. Um, because I've been doing some more like testing and there's two, there's two completely different. Two completely different Escape from Tarkov experiences. Mm -hmm. There's Escape from Tarkov before 3 p.m. and then Escape oh, from Tarkov yeah. after 3 p.m. I've I've like every time. Yes. Over the last true. two weeks, I've been testing this. It's night and day, dude. This is true. Like, I, and the days yep. I've been streaming for 12, 15 <laughs> hours or whatever, it's literally success. Until all of a sudden I die to some annoying shit. And I'm like, huh. And then I look at the clock and it's 3.30 and it's like. 3.30. Oh, yeah. and when I just had six hours of of, of just surviving. And yeah, and it, it's been making me think. Um, because like the simple answer that everybody says is, oh, well, you know, it's all the kids or people that come home from work and they're just better. Right. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure that is true to some extent mm -hmm. right but but really what it comes down to i think is just the overall density like population density um earlier think about it this way imagine you're in a, a customs run mm -hmm. okay and how many people can spawn in the customs like fuck, 14 yeah, i don't know 12, 12 or whatever so imagine you're over in boiler side or you mm -hmm. know whatever and eight people all spawn on like around you in that area. Yeah. Think about just picture that area of the map and then think about like where, you know, if you pick a random yeah. direction for each of those people to start running, how quickly the lines would start to cross, right? And every time the line crosses, that's an engagement. That's a fight. Yep. Compare that to when there's six people in a server. Yeah. You, they don't fucking cross except for like marked room yeah, or exactly. whatever. Yeah, exactly. Dorms or gas the funnel, station. The yeah. The funnel points. Um. Yeah, like I, I, I'm playing shoreline all day long, and I would get into one, <laughs> like a one v two, and then maybe twenty minutes later a one v one. Yep. And I would win because I have maybe like a sixty percent chance over just like the average person. Yeah. You know, to win that fight. So sixty percent, sixty percent. You know, okay, great. But when, you know, maybe there's some more above average people and maybe it's a 50%, maybe it's a 55 or maybe it's a 45% chance. But then I'm going to run into a squad, a solo, a squad, a solo, and a squad. I have to essentially win a coin flip and then win a coin flip and yeah. then win a coin flip and then win a coin flip and then win a coin flip Yeah. to be able to extract. 
it's it's literally you're talking about a 10% chance versus a 60% chance. Yeah. Um <clears throat> it's night it's night and day. Yep. Uh so yeah. It really is. And I and I think that that's something that people underestimate is the um the, the just literal um amount of people because exactly everyone says well the cheaters get home, everyone says all the cracked out kids get home and th that probably represents a percentage of those deaths. Yep. But Nikita, the last few times I've heard Nikita talk about spawns, like d like on the on the wipe day podcasts, you know, where they like it was down, they gave us the patch notes, the trailer, and like the whole four hours the game was down, Nikita was live doing the podcast or, or the BSG. <clears throat> when somebody asked how many people in chat can spawn on Lighthouse, he said something, he was like, he was like, uh, I think like 25, but, but, and then he like did a real quick, like, but that's only if all the groups spawn. And the last few times I've heard him talk about spawns, it, it, he really made it seem like, um, it's not how many people can spawn. It's how many spawns get filled. And those spawns might all get filled with groups. So if there's or 10 solos, so if there's 10 yes. spawns, there could be 50 people or 10 people exactly that i yeah, i yeah. think there is some there's some math there where obviously that's not all the way true like i've never spawned on customs with 50 people you know what i mean even though there's yeah, yeah. 10 spawns and technically you can group up with five but i do think those numbers it's not just 10 to 12 people like i think eight of those spawns are going to get filled and if during the day six of them are solo players and during the night six of them are duos or trios it's, it's still the same amount of spawns but the, the the amount of players can double and then yeah then if you're doubling if you're doubling the amount of players even if they're all average players completely average your survival rate is going to plummet because everybody needs quests everybody needs pvp stuff everybody's going to go to mark everybody's going so it doesn't That's matter huge. how good i didn't think about that because just like you said it doesn't matter how good you are or how good they are at, at the end of the day the difference you know what i mean if you're better than them like you said you might have a 60 percent chance if they're better than you you've got a 40 percent chance that matters less than how many coin flips you're engaging with so when it you know, so I I really think that that's part of it and then yes I'll, yeah maybe the really good NA people come out at night because they're home from work yes maybe the cheats ramp up a little bit additionally but I think more of that equation is people are grouping and then that just dramatically increases how many people are on the map yeah yeah I mean that's that's <laughs> maybe even more significant than what I was what I was thinking in that. Uh, cause I mean, yeah, if, if it's during the middle of the day, chances are it's like an unemployed dude yeah. or a content creator or a kid who's homesick from school yeah. or right. Like exactly. Or, or even an adult that works nights, but his friends have the nine to five. So exactly. when he's off work at night and he links up with his friends, but when he's, you know, I got the night shift today, he woke up at 10 AM. He's going to get some raids in. I, I yeah, think, so yeah. There's so it's, many more solos during the day. But so like literally yesterday was one of the one of the days that I, I streamed early. I started the stream with, I think, 53 rubles, like something fucking stupid. <laughs> I mean, it, it's I have like millions of rubles worth of, of shit stuff, in boxes. Yeah. I just don't feel like selling. Um, but I did like 10 quests in a row and suddenly I was at two million rubles, which was, I think, the first time I've been over a million rubles. Yeah all white and i went and i got two million in the span of a few hours yep and then 330 hit and before it was 430 <laughs> i was i was completely broke again yep um it's now just... i would say half of those deaths are all of those clips you just saw all of yes. those scab clips that was literally that the, the the funny thing is is like you might expect that that would be like high light like low lights over the course of like a week that was raid number one, raid number two, raid number three, raid number four, and raid number five of the same. Yeah, of the same you know? session. Yeah. So it's like how, you know, when people are like, oh, unlucky. It's like, how unlucky <laughs> is it when it happens six out of seven? No, that's just the default, right? Like, yeah. That's the way it is. A hundred percent. So, 100%. yeah.
So to, to start off with like the topic we wanted to talk about of how Tark how's Tarkov feeling, um, I'm still liking the the VoIP stuff. It, it's still yeah. making for fun encounters, um, but the scavs are still. I don't. I won't harp on it. No, you know, yeah, it's. It, but the scavs are still really shitty, and the stamina stuff is still really fucking annoying. It man, it really like shows you how close we are to such a perfect experience because every podcast we so quickly arrive arrive back to the scavs. Like, you know what I mean? It's like everything around them is working so well. It's just like we keep coming back to that because it's been it's been brutal. <laughs> yeah, it's um, uh, it is. It's been rough. The stamina stuff, yeah. Like I think you said, yeah. Nikita turned down some of the, some of the stamina stuff, but it's still, it's still it, really. I rough. think he's like thinking about or considering, yeah, maybe some of those... more some of the larger changes around adrenaline or whatever. But again, I keep sending him. It's funny. All of the links, I'm like, look at the way the AI behaves, and also look at my stamina bar. Yeah, and you'll see how I snipe Sturman, and then instantly I get shot out in the open when they can't see me and now i have no stamina yeah. and it was like you know it 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 just demonstrates all of the things yeah all together uh yeah and yeah. uh yeah and it's it's just it's been it's been feeling especially on maps that you need to traverse a lot of distance like i'm playing a lot of lighthouse and if you get like a you know a spawn and you need to go on the other side it's just like how many times you because then then what you're doing is the player behavior is accentuating the issues because my behavior is then run all the way until my stamina bar is empty and then walk because I need to get to the other side of the map and then I'll get shot when my stamina bar is that empty and you're just toast. You can't do anything. Yeah. I've also noticed like uh, on Lighthouse, I've noticed this with stamina, <coughs> excuse me, is uh the when you... Like when you jump and when you fall off of something, you get a stamina, like your stamina won't regen for a few seconds. Have you noticed that? And like if yeah. you're scaling some of those mountains on Lighthouse, like if you're going down to the northern chalet, you you like, if it's two inches, if it, if it makes the audio cue the plop, then your stamina goes down. So sometimes you're, you're coming down those mountains, it's like plop, 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 plop. You're like... Find your way down, and then you get to even the, though you're just holding W and yes. walking, you look down and you have 10% stamina. So, you're like, fuck. So, you had full stamina at the top of the mountain, you didn't sprint or jump, you just walked down the mountain and you have no stamina. And it takes like it almost like stacks you, it like takes an eight or nine seconds for your stamina to even begin to go up again, and you're just like stuck back there. It's like, oh my god. Um, but yeah, it's it's been it's been brutal. Uh, as far as how Tark has been feeling for me, man, like I am, I'm through a lot of the quests. Um, I need to level sniper skill and then like grenader, but like a lot of my quests are either like shooter born in heaven or like getting soft skills up. And that stuff I'm just not like worrying about because I can't get Kappa as soon as I'm done with those quests. So I'm not like yeah, mating yeah. him down. <laughs> and because of that, I've been playing a lot of Lighthouse and it's been so much fun. Like I almost just like tweeted this out. Like it's crazy uh, where we're at. Like yesterday I was playing with geeks and we were on lighthouse and we spawn and we move up and we're sniping all the rogues. And as we're sniping the rogues, we see somebody sniping rogues on the other side. We start taking sniper fire in our sniper nest. So we clear the rogues closest to us and we move down. He's a bear, so we have to be super careful. We engage a whole group of the rogues down on the first floor. They're super aggro. Player scavs start flanking behind us. We're doing like crazy movements because we need to line of sight the rogues, but take care of the player scavs behind us first. As we're just in the middle of this, we hear the airdrop it's coming and we're like yo it's landing right there it lands in the freaking train yard right there so we clear we finally kill all the player scabs we clear the last of the rogues we go in we quick loot the rogues we go up we're looting we're tag team and looting the airdrop fighting off player scabs that saw it and have been running in once we get it all the train pulls up we go in hold it down and extract and i'm like this game is awesome. Like, you know what I mean? All of that stuff, the new AI, the new map, the new airdrop mechanic, the VoIP, VoIPing with the scavs. It's like every once in a while you get that God raid where it just like you experience it all. And it was like that raid was so sick. We made it out with loot. We were busted. I had no ammo left. I pulled a bunch of good stuff out of the airdrop. We extracted via the train. And it was and just you know like, what's so you know, what's so like heart wrenching 
is that with a little bit more attention to detail and paying attention to some of the feedback and tweaking things, that would be every, every single raid, raid yes. win or lose. <clears throat> exactly. So that's why it's like you get a glimpse of how amazing it could be and then 10 hours of just pure fucking frustration. Exactly. Um, that's that, what makes... And that doesn't have to happen. <laughs> yes, that's what makes... When you have those raids, that's what makes dying to the scavs in those crazy, frustrating ways all the more frustrating because you feel yourself, like, getting set up for this awesome raid. You know what I mean? Maybe you're 10 minutes in, you've already killed Your a player. Your flight to Disney just got canceled. <laughs> yeah, exactly. the weather. You're already 10 minutes into the raid. Maybe you've killed a PMC. You've already got decent loot. You haven't even made it to where you were trying to go yet, and you feel it. You're like, this raid's going to be sick. And then, way, and then just through a bush, you're just dead. And you're like, and it makes it that much harder to, yeah. to bear because you're like, you feel it. And that's, I mean, it's, it's what we've been trying to communicate for the past few weeks is that like the game is in such a good place that it's not that we don't have anything else to complain about. So we're complaining about scavs over and over again. It's that the scavs are like hindering each of these like amazing additions, you know what I mean, to the game yeah. in, in in their own different ways, and it makes it harder to, to bear with. But like, um, but like I caught that glimpse yesterday, and I've I've already been having fun. But like we that was the last raid of the day, and we ended that raid, and I was like thinking about it all day. I was just like, I got every experience I wanted to get out of a raid. It was intense. It was stressful. It wasn't just like. I killed 37 people and I didn't even take damage. Like we were CMSing, we were swapping kit. I got, it was just everything. It was like, this is Tarkov. It was pain. It was struggle and we made it out and it was just so fun. And so like those, those whiffs, those wisps of what Tarkov could be are there. And it's like, we just gotta, and I know it feels, it feels so bad. Cause well, I'm harping on it so much, but it's like, you know, they've only, we've only been in 12, 12 for like three and a half weeks. I just really hope that. Like I know that the I know what's on everybody's radar when people think what they want for 2022 is streets, you know, because it was supposed to be 2019. They're supposed I to be 2020. About, I, I forgot about streets Mo until literally one person a week mentions. Yeah, it. most people that like when you ask them what they want for 2022, like that's on their thing. Yes, I want streets, and yes, I want more content. But like, we're we're so close to such an amazing experience. Like we don't. Like, yeah, give us streets, but give us streets uh, this, you know, just give us streets Christmas, Christmas this year and everything in between. Just like fix it all up, get better audio, more steam audio modules, work on the net coding with the homies. Like, you know what I mean? I know the content people are always going to be making content. Yeah. But like, man, that's what I want out of 2020. We're already so close to this, like pristine experience. Just exactly. Listen to the feedback, tighten up those screws and Oh my gosh, it's gonna be great. I hope. Amen. Yeah. I hope. Speaking of scavs, what is this pistol thing? What is this? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just... So, so you're you're you are a. I would. Is it safe to say that you are a an untrained civilian shooter? Yes. Um. Uh, untrained doesn't mean like you've never practiced before. It just means you're not yeah, professionally exactly. trained by I've like, you know, fucking trained by someone basic training or like police academy, whatever the fuck, you know, like you didn't go through the SIG pro level certification course yeah. that I just made up. Okay. So let me ask you, let me, this, this is the <laughs> meme that we've been dealing with for the last two days. And I've asked a few people this. Uh, I actually asked, got to ask donut operator and got oh, it really? really, really quick. Uh, really quick answer from him but so yes or no if I, let me describe a situation okay and you tell me just answer yes or no you are an untrained mm -hmm. civilian mm -hmm. let's say maybe you might be uh, like yourself but maybe a little bit more hobo like let's say mm, okay you've got a let's just say a nine millimeter pistol that's kind of beat up and shitty yeah Iron sights. Iron sights, yep. Um, probably hungry. I haven't eaten in a few days. Probably a little cold. Yeah. It's Russia. So let's say you see a person, you know, with like body armor and a rifle, like a soldier, yeah. 50 meters away from you. Would you describe hitting a headshot on him <laughs> with an iron sights on a pistol, nine millimeter, 
standing while you're being shot at, would you describe that as, quote, easy? No. <laughs> okay, well, I, I hate to be the one to inform you, but that means that you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. You must have never shot a gun in your life. Yeah. And you need to stop talking. And I'm assuming I w that would have hit that headshot while like s while moving, right? Like while strafing backwards, you know what I mean? Or potentially it, moving between you know, a crouch this, and a prone. In this scenario, in this scenario, no, but let's say you were you were in the process of having your face turned into a jello mold by a 308 round. Mm. At the basically the very same moment, um, yeah, and also you were standing up on top of a shipping container about fifty meters away. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, so you're shooting like downward iron sights with a grotch. You're a scav. <laughs> you're probably drunk, and yeah. yeah. So that was one of the clips that I had where I like scope in, line up, and he goes pop, pop, dead, and I get tapped in the face. We actually traded, um, and I basically what I had said was, I. That's a situation that I would say should reasonably happen if I had to throw out a number. Yeah. 0.001% of the time. Yeah. Yes. It's it's not impossible. No. It's but it's I if I was the scav, yeah. In real life, you know, not in video games, it's easy to point and click on someone's head, but like in in a real life situation, I would not feel good in that scenario like yeah i'm i'm probably gonna win this fight yep. i think i would feel like more often than not i would lose that fight yeah um yeah so i basically was saying like it's it's safe to say that we should not expect w what are essentially drunken hobos maybe some of them have a little bit more training maybe one's an ex-police officer i don't yeah. know but like on average yep it should effectively be impossible for them to fucking hit those shots yep um yeah, and I, yep. I was just, yeah, I just had to, I, I had, I have to ask some more people who, uh, I, I just <laughs> got so Jonah badly, say? he said, fuck no. Yeah, that's what I thought. He said, of course not. That's a hard as fuck shot. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's the thing, is like, I'm sure I could hit the shot given, you know, my contacts are nice and fresh and the yeah. target's like a nice orange fucking thing. And, you know, I got some nice crispy iron sights. Yeah. You um, don't have and... the stress of seeing that another human is pointing a gun at you. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's not impossible. I would hit the shot. Just not. I wouldn't say it would be easy to do, let's say, in four shots. Otherwise, I die. Yeah. Uh I, I just okay. That was that was on this day, uh, week segment of Veritas. Veritas tries to ensure he's not being gaslit entirely, <laughs> bro. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's it's exactly. It goes back to the whole thing of like, what does the game tell us, and then what is the experience we get? The game tells yeah. us that these are hobos with no good gear and really terrible condition guns, and oftentimes, like my like my favorite is like. It's either that, it's either a Makarov, or it's the no dust cover, no butt stock, like Vepers. You know what I mean? It's like you would you would pick up and it would instantly like yeah. pinch half the skin off your thumb, jam, and then yeah. backfire on your face. You know, removing one of your eyeballs. <laughs> but people are hitting those from <clears throat> fifty meters, slowly walking backwards into the side through a bush Instant while headshot. you're hitting them in the center mass. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the best part was that after this, I'm like, I have to see, I'm like, I want to see someone shooting. So at my local range, my local range is 30 meters is, is okay. like 30, 35 ish. I think this is like as far as it'll go. Um, I've shot further than 30 meters outdoors, but usually either with a rifle with iron sights or an optic. Um, I generally don't try to shoot yeah. that far uh, with a pistol, but it's mostly because of my vision. Yeah. Um, I just have really bad eyes, so even if even if I had yeah. the fine motor control to not have my hand move at all, you know, while I'm trying to line up a shot with my like, you know, comparatively like the Glock, the Glock iron sights are nice, but they're fucking big. Yeah, that's gonna cover like I don't know what the yeah. percentage of a body, but it's like, it's not like you you're not gonna see the head. Yeah, of the target, you know. Um, yeah. 
it's but like we, I pulled up I pulled up the uh like the official pistol like uh competition okay is the standing 50 meter pistol oh that's like the you know quote unquote whatever fucking if you google 50 meter pistol shot it's just all like olympic whatever and the best part is dude it was hilarious it's first of all they have like these little electric trigger 20 oh yeah they have crazy looking pistol. pistols the like wooden grips are like fucking made ad hoc like yep. for your like bespoke for your hand and they're wearing this fucking like steampunk ass like <laughs> like, like i like, know exactly what you're i wear they've got like horse blinders on dude it's so funny they it literally looks like some fucking vegeta like power level shit it, it, it's it's insane and the best part is that like when they do the 50 meter they have like i think like what is it? It's like it was like two hours to make like 60 shots or something. And I'm like, oh, and the scav can hit four. Dude. You know, like no problem, easy. And then you see them every advantage in the world. Like I said, they've got the fucking hollow lens. Yeah. You know, uh, and the the pistols modded for everything and whatever. And and those guys are like hitting six inches from the center of the target. And you're you like, You need to do okay. Easy. Dude, easy though. Episode two of um Episode two of the the dance of Tarkov, the one with the really slow and it's the music. And the it's gonna have to be episode three because I'm already planning on episode two and okay. it's gonna be following around the scabs while they stare at oh, the sky. Okay. And episode three, the slow music and it's and it's just and it's back and forth of that. It's a limp. It's Olympians missing by six inches and then getting one tapped by scabs and then back to the the steampunk and everything. And we need to send that to Nikita and just be like. You know what I mean? Like, what do you what do you mean, bro? What do you mean, bro? Yeah, <clears throat> I've definitely noticed they don't, um, they don't get any sort of like aim punch. I've been having that a lot too. When some of those clips where you shoot them first, and they either don't die or, uh, like like I have a I have a from when I, I have a clip in one of my highlight videos. I was running around for Punisher Part 6. I have an SVD. Okay, I have an SVD. I'm 10 meters. Those are little bullets. Yeah, I am 10 meters from a scav, and I shoot him in the face with an OKP-7, and then I fall over dead, and the scav runs away. And I was like, what? You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, or you roll up on, like, the, it's, it's easier to do with, like, raiders or other, or because they have more HP and better armor. But, like, let's say you've got a an AK-74 uh, against, like, a Rishala guard. Yeah, because you're doing Punisher, and it, you have like maybe PP or BP, um, you know, five four five. Yeah, you've got this janky little tiny, you know, rifle that with a, a bunch of recoil on it. So you're probably just gonna like hold mouse one and sort of just hope, yeah, right? Yep, yep. And you're peppering them with bullets, and what it looks like, it looks like, I mean, they're like basically locked on center mass, and it's, they might get hit. But then it's like back center mass. Yeah. Like oh yeah. It's so it, it looks like they are affected by it, but th there's no only cool, until they pull no the trigger like, again. Exactly. It's like snap, so snap. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. So, not to mention that, um, and I've been doing a lot of research. I'm I've been now going into the re researching, um, how it is that AI developers implement vision mm. and hearing and the challenges around that yeah um and all of the different things you know like if you've ever played any of the stealth games and you have that like that little either triangle cone or like the oh, eye yeah. that's like you're slowly being detected like oh that's those things are actually like having some sort of delay between states even oh, if it's short shoot. It, that replicates the whole you're running through the woods there's trees moving and birds flying and then all of a sudden you see movement and you look off in the distance and you're like did i just see something and then finally you confirm the person peek out from the tree it's like oh uh. that is someone but instead the scavs go there's nobody there's nobody there's nobody there's a target right there shoot wow there's no there's no like there's no abstraction of yeah the, did i see somebody and then i have to 
recognize it's an enemy, and then I have to yeah. aim and let the gun settle, just like we have to, right? When you lift up the gun and it's got low ergo, it's like... Oh, my God, yeah. You know, so none of those things are simulated in any way. They, you go from not detected to detected. There's never a, like, Bro. go from, from, from idle to... Think about it. How many games have, like, a... Did I hear that? What was that? And they Dude, will start walking around on a. There's no on alert. You're there's blowing no my mind right now because they, this is like add it to the list of things where you know when we talked about the like teammate identifier conversation, it was the same thing. It was like the abstractions. It was something has to be real, unrealistic to represent a realistic behavior. Yeah. And it's funny because like I've played all those games, the Far Cry games, the Splinter Cell games, where you know the it goes the orange and then it goes red and then that's when they see you. I had never considered how weirdly realistic that is that the time it takes for your brain to be like, did I see something? Yes, that's bad acquired. You know what I mean? Then do yeah. that. It'd be so interesting if the scavs taunted first, you know what I mean? Obviously if you're running down the street and sniper scav sees you, but like if, if they hear you, you know, having them do some of their little low rumble taunts, they're not always yelling. Some of them, they're just like talking like, and actually doing that before they instantly start shooting. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, there's there's so much. I'm so excited to keep working on this video. It's so yeah. fascinating. I love making these videos, and so much of it is because I don't know how. <laughs> I I know from a high level that there's like a bunch of principles that you know. Yeah. That aren't in the game and whatever, but the same thing happened. I don't know if you got to see the um the video I did about like the pixelation. Uh, I was gonna ask you about that in video compression. Um, bef I knew a little bit about image compression. Yeah. And then I kind of knew, like, generally, you know, just based on, like, my computer science experience, how you could apply that kind of more. <laughs> I went from knowing 3% about it to then two days later putting the video out. And in those two days, I read a bunch of fucking research papers yeah. and a bunch of, you know, watched a bunch of college lectures, of you know, about all the math and stuff. And, like, I love learning about the shit. Yeah that's that's just as much fun as then making the video yeah and showing it to people and there's so much cool there's so much cool shit out there yeah um that i'm i'm excited to like talk about um and it's all the stuff that i've been that it's it's in games i've been playing my whole life yes and i've never appreciated it but it's it's not that i haven't appreciated it. it's more that i think back and at no point was i like fuck this game is unfair yeah, I did not. I didn't have those negative feelings. And that's a success. Right. Yes. Like, um, yes. Yeah, exactly. Like. Good AI. You're never really going to talk about, you know what I mean? Because you're just playing the game and it's either a hard game or you know what I mean? You're just you're struggling. You're you're not like tremendous AI is what you know, you might be like, wow, this is crazy. And some of these games like Red Dead Redemption, like you were saying, like sometimes you just take a step back and you're like, that's crazy. But good AI is just, you just play with it. You know what I mean? And it's funny because until I played Tarkov, I'd never really exactly had those feelings where I was like, yo, the AI in this game sucks. Like, it's so bad. <laughs> like, Dude, and then sometimes you have your fucking mind blown. Like you're playing, did you ever play Oblivion? Mm -hmm. Play Oblivion. Did you ever come across the, the skooma? There's like that one dude is like a skooma dealer. I can't uh, remember. He, he would give you like missions and stuff and... Uh, Every now and then, you know, on my millions of playthroughs, you come across him and he's dead. And you're like, what the fuck? Why is he dead? <laughs> and then nearby, inevitably, the dude who's like addicted to skooma will be just chilling and he'll have skooma in his inventory. And it's because Skyrim AI is is both a meme, but at the same time, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, because they're programmed... All of the NPCs are programmed to work and to also like need yeah. things like food and and drink. So what happens if you wait long enough, every NPC is going to basically say, okay, I need to go get food. If you put food down on the ground next to them and it's poisoned, they'll pick it up and they'll eat it and they'll fucking die if they're not like an essential NPC. Um, if you see... Oh... And then there's also like a like a responsibility, I think is the oh, the, the okay. phrase that they use. It's basically like you know how how lawful are they? Yeah. 
if they if there's no food around, they'll, oh, they'll or no steal food, it. they'll steal it. And then if the if the AI guards are around, they recognize theft. It's their job to go like arrest the person, but based on the way that their code works, they they like can't like they with the players they'll say like you have a bounty, pay the bounty or go to jail. But they treat them as if you've basically said no. So they'll kill on sight. Um those so every now and then if you find a random dead NPC, it's it's because they probably committed a crime. That's crazy. And they were killed by one of the, it's like that's the shit that you're like whoa yeah you know 100 and it can be janky and it can be funny and kind of a meme sometimes and they actually had to tone down the oblivion ai because it was actually like too chaotic <laughs> there was too much it was too much going on um but dude the moment you see two people fighting because one tried to pickpocket another because it needed food and didn't have any money and then you drop like your daedric fucking mace on the ground and one of them picks it up because it knows it's in combat and needs a weapon and then kills the other one with it and then just sits back down at the table and starts drinking yeah. whatever. It's like you have such an appreciation for actually implementing AI yeah. in like a meaningful way, not just giving. I mean, essentially what the scavs are right now, they've given the rifles extra sensory perception. Yeah. You've given you've given a shotgun eyes and ears. <laughs> yes. Flawless matrix connected eyes and ears. Yes. That's what that's what it is. That's Tarkov AI. So. Yeah. Now speaking of AI, let's talk about Santa Claus. Yeah, well my and scav karma is like Dead negative Moros. seven. Negative yeah. seven, I think I'm at now. Um I mean it, it's this is something I think that they probably should address at some point. Honestly, I, I, I kind of feel like there should be a once you get below a certain threshold like a, a a fence mission opens up that's like pay fence a million rubles and get back to zero that's an interesting or something. yeah like look at all the quests that for nothing it's like hi i'm prap or give me a million rubles because yeah. fuck you at least because here's what happens you get fucked by something like the santa change where yeah i had no idea santa was in the game and i had no idea that i would be punished for killing an yeah. ai as a pmc and I killed him a couple times. Then, of course, I'm yeah. negative. Um, and then after that, it's like, well, now that I'm negative, you get negative one or like negative 0.5 or negative 1.5. I There was different values for killing him at different times. Yep. But think about it. You get negative one for killing him. And then when I do a scav run, the one out of 10 times I actually survive, I, you get 0 0.01 rep. Yep. So you have to survive 100 scav raids to make up for that one great headshot you had on the guy <laughs> that happened to be a... Yep. Uh, santa that you couldn't tell um i yeah <clears throat> and there's no way there's now scav karma means nothing to me and i have no reason not to betray every scav and yes. i have no reason to scav like it just it makes everybody yes. it's always a give and take it's always a balance and i understand that but negative scav rep is so punishing and there are too many ways to get there accidentally that mm -hmm. when you get there there is no incentive to repair it because yeah. you're exactly right. You're like 700 raids to get back to zero? Nah. You know what I mean? Like, screw I'll that. Just, I'll, yeah, because now it's worth it to just now kill the scavs, just, and now you have a chance at the stuff that they have. Exactly. Right? I'll just where scav every hour and a half instead of every 20 minutes, and I'll now go kill Killa or, or Gluhar and take his loot. You know what I mean? The Santa thing was a classic two steps forward, two steps back. I thought the Santa event was so cool. I loved it. There was so much attention to detail. There were the Christmas trees. There were like 14 new quests. There were new items. I loved the red Santa backpack. I loved <coughs> I loved the concept of him dropping presents for you. I loved the concept of you can drop something for him and he'll take it and he'll return it to you. It was so good. I loved it so much. And then it was like, if you kill him, it's negative three scav rep. And he's going to look like you know, a PMC. Yes. He's going to have items that anybody else can have. You can get the backpack. You can get the hat. And I've seen tons. I've seen some hilarious clips of PMCs dressing up as Santa and then like doing the AI thing where they're like, you know, they do this and then they drop something on the ground and then the dude, you know, goes pick it up and they shoot him in the face. And it's funny. But like it's it was two steps forward, two steps back. This event, in my opinion, would have been 10 times better if he didn't have a gun. And he was unkillable. And if you shot him, he just ran away. You missed your opportunity at presence.
and he would just run away. Because, hmm. like, what do they want out of this experience? They want the Santa in the game to drop you presents. And if you shoot him, you shouldn't get your presents. But it's such a weird thing where it's like, if they make him killable, people will kill him because they want all the presents in his backpack, right? Yeah. So, like, if you take away the ability to get the presents, then you don't need the penalty, and it could just not be a deal. So here's where I wonder if, I mean, this goes with a lot of the scavs, too. Like, when they reload, or, you know, like, you you get in a fight with a scav, and they'll shoot, like, three mags and reload three times. Then when you kill them, they always have, like, two full magazines. Yeah. And, you know, it's like... So you wonder how much of their inventory is actually just like hand wavy fake bullshit. They should have just made it so that when he drops you something, it's just ra randomly generate a thing from thin air yeah. and, and throw it and don't put anything in his backpack. Yeah. I also you know what I mean. So like so then you get nothing for killing him. Yeah. I think also if he had like the backpack is cool and I like that the backpack was lootable, but he should have been in a Santa costume, an unlootable clothing item. Because once again, you had people dressing up just like him. Everything on him was lootable. Beard, hat, backpack. You know what I mean? And then it's just like you can just totally pretend to be him. You know what I mean? I want unlootable visual representation that that's not him. And then the same thing, though, is that like a, I know a lot of people like geeks killed him a couple times at night because at night from 30 meters away, what every every other scav right now has a Santa hat on like how are you supposed to tell you know what I mean that's why I think like if he didn't have a gun you know what I mean there's no I think it's, I guess it's cool Santa can kill you but if he didn't have a gun there's some visual representation no matter when you're looking at him no matter how you're looking at him that's like that's Santa I mean the first time I killed him it was like an 85 meter iron sight Mosin headshot yeah I, I shot him from like you know where you plant the uh the camera on customs over by the boat extract like mm -hmm. in the bush by those metal containers yeah. and he was like halfway on the bridge yeah and all i saw was a silhouette running and i was like chris kyle thwat like yes yeah. and i roll up and everybody was like no oh my god i'm like what that Wait, was a what? Sick <laughs> shot you know and and i just realized i i lost a month's worth of progress on yep. the very few scav runs i do so now it's just like i'm either not going to scav run or i'm going to be a bad citizen yeah and you know, I'm sure there's probably like some fucking analogy to like the prison systems and like punishing people and not rehabilitating them. Yeah, I mean, it's like once you get to a certain point, if there's no practical way of yeah. being able to either earn or buy or whatever, you know, yourself back, then yeah. why do it? Right. Like, I, I don't see why a million rubles to bring yourself back to zero I mean, how often? I don't know. I mean, you could, I guess, argue that like all you have to do then is kill a billion scavs to get to negative seven, yeah. sell all the shit that you get from them, and it's probably worth yeah. more than a million, and then pay yourself, and you and you come out on top. Well, I just okay, maybe. So maybe it's five million. I yeah. don't know, but just like give people away because now everybody's talking about like, well, the BSG has got to make some sort of new thing or new event or whatever after the fact yeah. to reverse it, or they're gonna undo it. It's like since. Nikita's not usually one to be like, oh, something we did was yeah, completely I'm wrong. Let's, un let's completely undo it, right? Like, yeah. if anything, there's going to be like 19 Jaeger quests that are, you know, stick this hot poker in your eye for 45 minutes and yeah. you'll get plus one rep. Yep. You know, like. Yeah. No, I think I agree. I, I just think you go at it by like addressing how easy it is to accidentally get there. Like, I just don't know who's the day one of the event. If you killed him, you lost 3.0 karma. Now they've changed. It's like 1.5 right now, but it's like, who thought that was a good idea? You know what I mean? Like, not everybody reads your Twitter. You know, like not everybody knew Santa was coming in the game. You just hop in for a raid. You see a scav, you shoot a scav. You know what I mean? It takes 300 survives to get 3.0. You know what Dude, I mean? So it's like, I, and it's the same I have thing. More Oh, sorry, go ahead. It's the same thing with the scav bosses. If you kill a guard, if you kill a scav boss, if you're a PMC and you're fighting somebody and you throw a nade and that nade kills Gluhar or something, your karma is trash. Like, <clears throat> the people that get down to negative seven because they're douchebags do so by repeatedly killing every player scav and AI scav they see. I haven't shot a single AI scav or a single player scav as a scav, not one exactly. time, and I'm max negative fucking rep. That's what I'm saying. So it's like, 
so I think we can ease up a little bit on the penalties for like the, the hardcore penalties, the penalties for killing scav bosses, the penalties for killing guards. They shouldn't be more than killing a normal person because you don't want scavs going in and like getting all the scav boss gear really easily. It should be, it should be bad, but yeah. like it doesn't need to be that bad because that person, if they're a dick, they're going to get to negative seven eventually. And if they're not, don't make it so brutal. You know what I mean? So uh, like, if killing scat if killing santa gave you, you know negative 0.5 that's 50 survives that's not nothing but it's like ooh i got to be careful these next few days you know what i mean and then you climb back up like negative 0.5 would have been so much better than negative 3 with how slow it is to to climb back up the ladder not not, not to mention i mean like not for nothing but like i had personally as a streamer you know with whatever the audience I have, I have like orders of magnitude, more opportunity and likelihood to hear about changes. Yeah. And I still killed him three times before I knew that was a thing. Yeah. So the, like, if you're going to do shit like that, yep. don't like best case scenario, they buried it in some paragraph of, of quest text. They probably didn't No. or it's on a tweet somewhere. Yes. That is not sufficient no. for shit like that. No. You need to pop up a message in game yes. with a fucking JPEG of Santa in whatever language the person speaks and said, Santa's in the game now. If you kill him, you're going to get blah, 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 blah. And you acknowledge it. I agree. Just like, I agree. I think that that would have saved them so much on that. And I agree. It's when you click open on Tarkov, that's the splash screen it loads and you have to click yes to get to your stash and if you didn't read it then you didn't read it but at least that yeah i completely agree there are a ton of people who killed him and had no idea and wrecked their scav karma wrecked their scav karma and it's hard yeah, for to get. like 10 months yes. of like yeah for effectively know. the wipe like you know what i mean like you're, you're not gonna get max karma this wipe because of that you kill him three times you're at negative four it's I'm like, not going to stab run because exactly of that's what i'm saying it's like it's it's not this doesn't just affect people for the the week the event is live like there are people who are like, I'm not going to scav anymore or I'm not or like you said, I'm not going to care about scav karma anymore. And that's frustrating because they put all that time and effort into making the mechanic like it'd be cool to see fence have dailies too for a very small amount of rep. You know what I mean? For sure. Why not just I mean, there's no reason why he shouldn't. No. Honestly, there's especially no because they've already shouldn't. like they've already blended the they've already muddied the waters of like, well, you shouldn't be able to get scav karma on your PMC. It was like, well, then I should be able to kill Santa. So if you're, yep. you've already muddied that water, then give me a daily quest where I can get my scav karma back. You know what I mean? Even if it was only like, you know, point one. That's Imagine still, daily quests for your scav. Yeah. I mean, that would be cool like too. Loot three food items or whatever, right? Like they could kill come up two with a, PMCs. Like, they oh, could, they that'd could, be sick. They could definitely add, you know, a new batch of quests that are, They'd have to, and again, this is maybe asking for too much, but yeah. you'd, they'd have to be, you know, thoughtful about the types of things that are possible and are easy to do. Um, yes. I, I almost never see fucking PMCs when I do scav runs. Um, but then again, I also don't do that many scav runs, yeah. so, like, I can't, I'm not the normal yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. But um, more often than not, I just end up, like, looting a bunch of shit and I leave. You know, maybe I'll get chased by an aggro player scav or something yeah. but like um yeah i don't know 100 percent, dude I, that'd be great 100 percent. i think there's a i think there's a bunch of different ways to do it but the event as a whole was so close to awesome it was so close to awesome but like it's it's exactly like you said they they made a few key decisions by making his backpack full of stuff i get i understand that that was probably a choice because they're like, yeah, so you have to choose, like kill him and take all his cool stuff and lose the karma. But overall, I think it would have been better for the event if, like you said, he just spawned something out of thin air. He was infinitely more recognizable. You know, like an interchange of the powers on you get near the arcade, the the little arcades and the music plays. And you hear like, he <laughs> should yeah. radiate Christmas music. <laughs> like they should have a boom box on his back. Like put jingle bells on his fucking dude, hat or whatever. I just think, I think, yeah. I, I think 
the event would have landed better with the community if it was less about the risk of killing him and more just about like there's Christmas decorations everywhere. The trees have cool loot. The scavs worship it, which was kind of weird, but kind of funny. And Santa was just a guy that walked around and he was either unkillable or much more recognizable. And you just, just remove that decision because like seven people playing Escape from Tarkov were like, yeah, I'm just going to kill him because it's fun. And three yeah. and 10,000 people accidentally killed him and were frustrated by it. So like way more people were negatively affected by it than the seven people who like understood it and then made the choice. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I mean, and that's and this is just one more example of lacking the really careful attention to detail and and actually thinking about the experiences right like think about the way that how cracked and busted and broken the scavs are how if you walk up and you see like a pilgrim there's like an 83 percent chance that that pilgrim instantly 180s goes prone and stands up and shoots you in the head so you don't have any time no to make the decision yes. You know, so like I see a backpack and as a PMC, everyone as a solo player, every single breathing entity on the map is an enemy yep. that I have to kill. I have eight femtoseconds to fucking <laughs> one tap him in the head. Otherwise, yeah. you know, I'm dead and my entire raid is over. Right. Yep. So. So like it's the things like that, that it, you know, um, it was so close to a really yeah. cool event. Especially since in the past they had just done the Christmas tree. Like, you know what I mean? Like there were beards in the game and then you have the Christmas tree in the hideout. That was like the entire Christmas event last year. And then this year yeah. it was like, this is going to be sick. And then like almost immediately we're like, oh, this kind of blows, <laughs> you know? So it was close. So I, I hope they learn from it and they do. I love how much they're flexing their muscles of being able to do events. Like just shove all this stuff in there um randomly it seems like whatever content engine they've yes. made to be able to very quickly and dynamically do shit and that's that's key right and and what we've been talking about for so long about like people say they want more content it's like if you were someone who built homes yeah and everybody's like, I want a home, I want a home, I want a home, I want a home. You can take six months and build a home for each person, or you can take 10 months and build a home building factory yes. that spits out homes. Yes. You know what I mean? So I'm glad that it seems like they, yes. you know, the period where they weren't coming out with lots of content, it seems like they were investing that in whatever infrastructure to yes. do daily content and whatever. And now they can just throw shit out willy nilly and then they can focus on systems yes. and bug fixes and other kinds of content that you can't yes. mass produce, you know, like guns and stuff that just take time to model and animate every individual 100%. thing. Um, yeah, for sure. So I completely agree. And now my hope is just that they pay a little bit more attention to detail to what that quest, the, the, the content they're spitting out is and that it, that it adds value to the game instead of taking away. Um, uh, okay. So some changes that came to the game very recently, did you see and or notice the changes to the secure container? I only it's only because a Twitch chat mentioned yeah. it to me, but I'd never these days my secure container is Grizzly, CMS, Golden Keys. Star, and Doc's case. Yeah. So my gamma is full. Yeah. Um it, so I don't put meds or ammo. Mm -hmm. I mean I have other than those meds I have there because that's enough for me to I can put like a Salua or an AFAC and like a Propital. Yeah. And that's all I need to buy every raid, right? And then everything else, that Grizzly and the the CMS or, you know, the serve kit will last me a day or two days. Yeah. Um, and I'll take that over having less things I can put in my pouch for just not having to fucking buy shit oh, every single sure. raid. It affected me very little. I had recently been running around with a smoke grenade in my secure containers for airdrops. I didn't want to buy a smoke every raid. You know what I mean? Um and I will admit, when I do the quest Grenadier, I normally do load into a factory raid with one grenade in my hands and seven in my grandma. You know what I mean? Other than yeah. that, though, I'm never a mags in the secure container guy. I hate that. I'm always openly, in a joking way, like, against that. Like, one of my yeah. highest performing tweets, like, was just like a year ago. And it was just like real chads keep their mags in their rigs. You know what I mean? And because everybody's so, like, spicy on that. I just, I just hate it. I hate killing a dude. It's like, you got the best of him. He's a Chad. You can tell, you know, he's got a wrist tee. He's got a slick. He's got a meta AKM. And you're like, sick. And you search his rig and it's like Salua. 
And you're like, come on, bro. Like, I, I get it. I get the whole concept of like, you know, rich people don't it's, get it's rich efficient. by spending all their money. You know, yes, I get that he's trying to min max. That's why he's so good. That's why he's so rich. I understand that. But I just hate. I just, I don't know. There's just something about it that rubbed me the wrong way. So I'm excited about it because I like the fact that, and 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 to a lot of people that were like, well, this doesn't affect me at all. People were like, I didn't even know you could do that. I was like, I think it affects you a little bit. It affects you a little bit more than you think it does because if you're one of those people that's always frustrated that you're always dying to the best ammo, to BP, to 995, it's because these guys bring in 300 rounds of it and risk 60. They're not risking 300 rounds of it. So now they either have to risk 300 rounds of it, which is even harder to get because they can't buy 995 on the flea, or they pack one mag with the good stuff and the rest with okay stuff, or they just top them all off. And now when you get the best of them, you get all the good ammo that they brought in. So it affects you. Yeah, there's no you. safety net. You know, it affects you them. a little bit more. Uh, the ammo diversity might increase because of this change. And or when you get the drop on a guy, you get that good ammo now that you can use. So I think that's good. And then the grenades. Yeah, uh, the grenades is, is something good as well, especially with the introduction of the impact grenades, which we haven't really talked about the impact grenades much since. Like, they feel <laughs> they feel so they're terrible. Actually, impact grenades plus they're terrible. The ammo stuff. Let me tell you, the last night it was like the last raid of the day. Or no, actually, this was this was like one of the first raids at like 4 p.m. I did yesterday. I had the uh, I had a Gen 4 assault and an Alton, and I'm like, I'm gonna go in to factory and have like an old school yeah chat it up. This is down. the this is the one raid I'm gonna go in and use the 17995 plus the few rounds of AP plus the 856A1, right? Like all these little scraps that I've gotten together and I'm going to go in and be the Chad. And I spawned forklift. I ran out the door. I peeked down glass hallway, exploded. And all I saw was a, was a naked hatchling yeah. in the end of his grenade throwing animation. And it, that was actually a VOG. It wasn't even an impact really? grenade, but it was still like... So there's, there's kind of a couple of bits of it. One... They feel shitty just like Vogs do, I guess. Like, it's the same thing. Yeah, oh, they're um, so much worse. <laughs> I mean, maybe, maybe, I don't know. Like, I've died to... Yeah. Every time I've been, I've died to grenades, a couple of them have been imp impact grenades, but a bunch of them have been Vogs that I thought were impact grenades, and I was bitching about the impact. Yeah. And I see, once I get to the kill screen, it was actually a Vog. So, like, conceptually in my brain, they're wrapped up in the same sort of... You press G, mouse 1 in the hemisphere of another player yeah and no matter no matter what you're wearing and no matter what they're wearing yeah they're dead and there's nothing you can do right because no you hear the little clink 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 and it's like that might as well be it's like when i play pinball to me pinball and like horseshoes are the two things that no matter how much you play you don't get better it's pure rng baby yeah every you have no control I, I, i'm half facetious yeah like, of course about that. Yeah. but like you hear the little clink 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 and at some point you just have to say I'm going to guess the right side of this fucking wall is, <laughs> yeah. the, is the place to be, right? But it might not be. It might be that yeah. it rolls over. So um, it's it's it sucks. Yeah. And then combine that with the fact that with the good fact that everything is rare and, you know, people aren't running around with yeah. all their Chad gear and whatever. It ends up being like part of part of limiting all the good shit is that. It makes it exciting when you find it and then you get to use it. Yeah. But then when you find it and you get to use it, if you get cucked by a scav instantly or yes. or you die to some other thing that, again, you can't help. Because the, yeah. the other time I went into factory with, you know, level six armor, level five helmet and a face shield and like a kitted, the one meta kitted M4 that I got off of some dude. Yeah. I spawn forklift because i have a fucking 3090 and whatever and so i'm always going to spawn the shit spawn oh, yeah. every and i peek down glass hallway and i see a dude and i'm like spraying at him through the boxes and whatever and then all of a sudden i can't hear anything the dude runs up on the on my left and with oh yeah pso in a fucking nine mil you know auto whatever goes pop 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 in my leg and i'm dead and it's like why am i wearing class six armor yeah if you know like so it now it just makes it it's weird in that I feel like there's no fucking reason to use yeah. 
any of the good stuff because it so very rarely actually makes a difference that now making everything rare makes me so that I don't even want to use the mid tier stuff. The, the, the best raids I've had have been like a 10 durability rat rig and an iron sight Mosin. And yeah. then I kill the dude with the wrist T and the fort. Yeah, I agree, man. I think, I think the game, all of the changes that the game has been making has been really good in 12-12 in pushing the rarity of things. Uh, exactly like you're saying, it, the, the ammo, the the guns, the really cool stuff, the really cool attachments for the M4s. A lot of that stuff is like more rare and it feels good when you get it. But there are other systems in the game that always mentally block me from caring or using it. Because like, like factories in the place, I'll never go kid it. Because it's like, I've got a 58% chance of running into a KS-23, which is literally uncounterable. Like, if he peeks you, like, bef if if he peeks you and gets a good shot on your leg before you knew it was a KS-23, you're just dead. If you knew he has a KS-23, keep your distance, you know, outmaneuver him or whatever. And it's the same thing with the impact grenades. It's like, no matter what you're wearing, there is, uh, there's just nothing you can do. And it, yeah. and it just like... It, it, it to a certain extent negates that. Like I think the I think the best gear in the game, like slicks, wrist tees, and stuff like that. There is no denying that they're better. And and if you could wear them 100% of your raids, your survival rate would go up. Uh, but I think they're overrated. Like I think people put you know what I mean way too much. Like there's so many ways to kill somebody in a slick and an Alton quickly you know what i mean like with an impact grenade with a ks23 with a vector with rip you know with a freaking ppsh with lrmpc like yeah. there's so many ways to very quick with a keter with sp7 the only way that it ever makes a difference is if you have two dudes both wearing level five or level six yeah. armor both with meta stuff and if one has six a1 one has five a1 and then the durability of the forts are a little bit different and they both are aiming you know center mass and yeah. head that's when the one bullet time to kill difference matters. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like exactly. I, otherwise, I, you 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 get killed without any response. And and to me, it's actually the opposite. Factory is the one map I feel like I have control just because like you can always get to cover and I can use sound yeah. and movement to my advantage. Whereas in customs, it's like, well, there's a building 300 yards off in the distance and there's a bunch of trees. All I can do is just shift W and hope until I get there. And then at some point, I might just get shot by someone I never saw, whether it's a scab yeah. or whatever. So, yeah, it's it's a weird kind of thing where it's like I love the, how the rarity of everything. But then at the yeah. same time, it's like I, now I just all don't care anymore yeah. that I get the rare stuff. And I want there to always be the chance. Like, I think a lot of Tarkov, the experience of Tarkov is is the, is you're never safe, right? Like, I don't mm -hmm. want the Slick and the Alton to mean I'm unkillable for three raids until the durability goes down. I always, always, always want there to be. But I want that to either require a lot of skill or, like, a, or a lot of RNG. Where, like, like a, a lot of people don't realize this because of the oversimplifications. Like... You know, a 7.62, this might not be a good example, but there are ammos out there that have like a 7% chance to pen an Alton. A lot of people don't realize that that means 7% chance to pen an Alton. You know what I mean? A lot of people think, oh, this round can't go through Alton. You know, they die and they look at the thing and they're like, that guy was cheating. That round doesn't go through an Alton. It's like, no, sometimes it will. You know what I mean? I mean, se seven out seven times out of 100, you get one tap you get through your Alton tap. with the stuff that should never do it, exactly. quote unquote. So there's already mechanics like that in the game. Like, that's enough. And then there's the skill mechanics of like, uh, out maneuvering somebody, out positioning somebody, and shooting them enough. And then on top of that, there's like the grenade mechanics, like an M67 or an F1. If you get a really good one, you're gonna get them. So there's already enough like really good things that prevent the best stuff from you being unkillable. But then there's all these like additional things that feel really bad, like the KS23 impact grenades, Vogs, some of the how stamina how, burn and the grenades. How ridiculously take away high. like 80 percent of the things you can do yes in a, how in a ridiculously fight. high some of the flesh damage of certain rounds is the fact that the you know leg meta is even a thing like some of those things just don't feel so good and then when you stack those things on the really good things it to me it, there's too many things for me to really run my classic stuff you know what i mean like because it's just like I'm, I'm just gonna die anyway like so we're in a weird spot where like so i got that gen for assault right yeah it was 
uh, I got it off of a Raider in Labs. It was, you know, like 12 durability because I sprayed them yeah. center mass in a panic because I, you know, didn't have the milliseconds to spare. So I kind of yeah. just held mouse one with PSMO and an AK and I killed them, right? I went to repair it and it was 90,000 rubles to repair it. And then it, I checked and I could sell it to Ragman for 70,000 rubles. So it's like I can't put it on the flea market. And yeah. when I use it, it's it's almost just like I don't know how it's it's really weird. Yeah. Like I, I don't know what to think yet about how all this stuff works. And it's only gonna get worse when they when they make the armor hit boxes oh, yeah. like smaller because then there's just that many more ways exactly. in which you'll you can lose exactly. when you're wearing it. So it's like we I don't, just don't know where it fits. Like it's yes. three hundred thousand rubles for something that increases your survival rate by I mean, it depends if it's 80 percent or if it's one percent, like there's a sliding scale yes. where it's like it's worth it. You're absolutely right. We can't and I don't we know where can't that is. Let the game swing the pendulum the other way where good gear is literally meaningless because there is a laundry list of ways you can die. Cracked scavs, you know, like it's just there's too many. Exactly. We have to find the balance. Good gear was maybe too OP and too available. Now it's not as available, but like. If we keep adding freaking impact grenades and ways, like, then why have the good gear? What's the thrill of the chase? Like, Tarkov right now is just 88% your gun and ammo. Like, th that's that. You know what I mean? All other things in the game exist in the other 12%. You know what I mean? And it's like, so I want the good gear. I want the slick and I want the Alton to be rare as heck. And then when I get it, I want to be excited to use it, like, next raid. I want to be like, I feel powerful in this thing and if i'm stupid i'm gonna die or if somebody outplays me i'm gonna die but i want to feel powerful you know what i mean and so but you don't want it so available that the guys at the top can get it and run it every raid like i understand it's complicated but it's a weird balance it's a uh, very again, weird balance but going all the way back to the beginning of this conversation i submit that impact grenades add zero value to the game <laughs> all let's, it let's, all it does is add another way that you can die to shenanigans and there's no other side there is no push it's the pull. grenade launcher without the reload and without the expense Infinitely and without the more uh um accessible it's the grenade launcher yeah. but and it works when, more accessible it works when you're seven feet away from somebody and they're in a in a room they just you know win it's not unlike you know at least a vog you hear the pop the grenade and yes. you at least have like one second to run out and hold yeah. mouse one of the room but now in this case you don't even 100 you Dude, don't have that. Yeah, it's we were me and Seal were uh, doing reserve and I had a quest. The quest is extract at D2 and I freaking hate D2. You know what I mean? So we're moving down there. And he said to me, he was like, he's like, you remember the last time we played reserve? We got camps down here. <laughs> and and then the audio cucked us. We literally heard an audio cue above me and behind me. And I, I said to Seal, I was like, uh, or I was about to say, I was like, I'm going to close the door behind us so that guy doesn't push behind us. Like, we were both very confident. He was up and behind. We were moving down. Seals in front of me. I just closed the door. He rounds the corner, and there were two completely naked, leaning. They were each leaning around corners, and they just threw impact grenades. So, literally, like, I was behind Seal. He turned, I just, like, I all I heard was boom. There was no pin pool. They, they were... Standing down there, they had already pulled the pin. They were just waiting. I've seen, you know, I've seen that a couple times. I died very. Uh, I, I died like, to a dude doing that. I'm pretty sure the like, you know, I don't know if it was like Xville Camper or whatever. I, someone made a yeah. video, but like, that was like the meta for a bit. Now uh, I dumpstered them. The one guy killed himself with his own impact grenade, and I, uh, not like I'd never gotten so toxic in my life after I killed a guy. I was like. You are the scum of the year. Like, I was so happy I killed him because the only outplay, the the only way you outplay an impact grenade is step one, sacrifice your teammate because then you know they have impact grenades. It, it's This is this is it. I'm going to make a YouTube video incoming. No, not really. Sacrifice your teammate so you know they have impact grenades. And you know that they can't already have the, the pin pre-pulled. Step two. It, it takes long enough for them to take the second grenade out and throw it again that you just rush them and they're dead. Step two, when you hear the pin pull, just rush them because they are like the GL40s where they have an arming distance. Oh, they do. They I do. was going to ask it's, if you throw it at your feet. It's does it... one meter, <laughs> but it's an arming distance. So if you just kiss them on the mouth, 
you they they throw it at you and it either hits you and drops or it goes over your shoulder and i just put my ump in that guy's face and i dropped him uh his his second impact nade blew up behind me and hurt me a ton and the other guy died um to his own impact grenade so i got to take moron i got to take seal stuff out i was so close to d2 that i got it but it was just like he just turned a corner like what do you do with a vog you hear the clink clink and if if seal can recognize it fast enough he pushes forward right like they just threw it out they're not going to throw it at their own feet he pushes forward really quickly and tries to get out of there and i go backwards but literally you go from no chance to one second chance yes which is still or compared to a normal grenade, which is three second yeah. chance. I, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's like I'm team remove them from the game and make the Vogs as hard to get as the impact grenades. Like they've they the impact grenades went from you could buy two per reset at proper level three. to you could buy two per reset at proper level four. So now you can barter for two per reset. So now you can barter for them, but the barter is more expensive, two per reset. So now you can only barter one, and the barter is yet again more expensive. They have nerfed the purchase of them five times already this wipe. In my opinion, impact grenades should go, and if VOGs stay in the game, they should be expensive barters that you should only be able to get one per reset. And like no AI in the entire video game, except maybe the scav bosses themselves, should spawn with VOGs. Like it's just so, I just don't know what value it adds to the game. You know it's what so I mean? funny. I, I think maybe the fact that you play with squad, like you play in, in groups or, you know, duos oh, yeah, or whatever, yeah. has to mean, you know, the, the engagements are probably longer than mine are on average. Yeah. Right. Um, Because I, I've seen one, no, two impact grenades and I threw one of them this really? entire wipe. Yeah. I, I, I died to gunshots. Yeah. Pretty much always with the exception of the fucking Vogue last night. Yeah. Um, yeah. I have a grenade case full of impact grenades. <laughs> it's full. I've never bought one, never even seen one. <laughs> yeah, they spawn a lot on reserve. Well, it, less that they spawn more on reserve. Reserve has a lot more of the grenade cases. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I, you can, I, like, don't think I, I haven't played reserve once this wipe, actually. Um, so you Not can, uh, you can if you're a reserve farmer, like if you're a reserve money farmer of wipes past, you can pull, like somebody just put in chat, I'm assuming that that's what they do. And he said, you can find a, about 10 impact grenades on a reserve raid easy. Um, there's just so many. And I found them in uh, grenade containers. Um, I got level three prepper early enough to buy, bought a bunch on the resets and then the barters, I bartered for a bunch of them. But like, it just, I just don't get it, man. I just don't, it's just one of those things like, you're ex I had never really put two and two together, but you're exactly right. It is an infinitely more available and cheaper toxic grenade launcher, which they, over the course of six months, nerfed into oblivion. Yeah, I haven't seen. I've if seen they one. They took the GL yeah. and the T7s out of the game. Nobody would know except the data miners for months. And in my opinion, if that's the line, then why have it in the game? And you're not really like honoring the people that took all the work working on the GL, especially the GL, because it was like in the game and then it would like nuke the game. And then it was like four years later, they put it back in the game. And it's like, well, so to play devil to play devil's advocate there, Stupid. I guess. They're, you know, dying to the grenade launcher is really fucking annoying, but using a grenade launcher once in the course of a wipe you know it might be fun to use it like that one time yeah and but what that means is that you'll be on the receiving end of it on average like once per wipe yeah so i don't know it's like one of those things like i don't think it's worth taking out oh, necessarily no. but but I, I would i would be totally fine with impact grenades getting brought to you know like 90 percent of the rarity of whatever i yeah i, yeah, I, I don't think they really add anything and i they shouldn't be something that you can here's the deal they're they're easier to get than fucking like yeah. um then bp 545 is yes or nine mil ap yeah. yeah yeah no that's the your train of thought there is exactly right no yeah and, and i get maybe it'd be cool like i get what you're saying if you couldn't sell them on the flea they shouldn't be at the traders at all they should only spawn in the grenade cases and it should be like a one percent chance 
Because then it's yeah. like when you die to it, you're like, oh, that dude found an impact nade. You know what I mean? And I completely agree. Like uh, with the GL, I've said this many times. My my thought there isn't take it out of the game. It's fix it. It's remove the one to three and the ten to fifteen meter grenades, um, and then make it cheaper. You know what I mean? And now it's like it's an expensive item. You know that that dude risked it, and you and you just it's like 30, 45 meters is the effective distance. And, and now we'll it requires it so, like so much more skill to use. Yeah, make it so it's like the equivalent of if it explodes at your feet. Your legs are blacked and your stomach is at fifty yeah. percent or whatever because yeah, then like you're landmine. already you're already fucked. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, that's true. Where's where's the nobody cried about insta die. nobody cried about their immersion being broken when they changed the landmines. Like when you hit a landmine right now, your leg and stomach are damaged. That's it. I hit when one. Did they make that change? I, I hit one today. I don't know. I hit one today. I was doing a, I was doing, <laughs> I was offline lighthouse trying to get footage for my lighthouse map guide. And I ran into one and I was like, oh, I didn't bring any freaking splints. And then I tabbed out and I was like, oh, I was like, I have a Salua. And you just heal everything up. You need, if you need to hit two in really, really quick succession or without healing, without yeah. healing, or if you hit one and heal, you need to hit two additional ones to die. Nobody I cried like about change. their immersion being broken there. So yeah, maybe the impact grenades or the um or the GL, the really close ones, can just like damage you or give you a fracture. And then now there's like a you have to yeah, play it all, to it. It it all comes down to and, and I think the landmines are actually an interesting thing because I was thinking about this the other day. Um I, I was gonna say like I, I would be totally fine if they fucking nerfed the landmines. Yeah, they're not um, bad now. They're in a good spot. Because it, it, it all, all of these things, whether it's scavs, whether it's armor, whether it's PvP, PvE, whether it's landmines, whether it's grenade launchers, whatever, it all comes down to it's a game. I want to play it. I don't want to just be given a result. I yeah. want to be able to react and respond. Yeah. And if you are if you are in an area that you don't recognize <laughs> and you're new to the game and you haven't memorized the map and you're standing, you're walking and all of a sudden, bang, you hit a landmine. There's nothing you can do except cross your fingers and walk in a street, mm -hmm. you know, like there's nothing you can do. It's not like there's a landmine detector. So I, I was basically saying last week um, sometime after I had stepped on, a, I didn't die, but after I stepped on a landmine, I was like, I don't see why they need to be like exponentially increasing in damage. They should just always do if you heal yeah. and then you yeah. step on another one, legs blacked out, stomach blacked out. You, if you stand in place and you heal again and you walk, boom, legs blacked out. Yeah. You know, like don't. It shouldn't be once you hit two, you're basically dead. Three, you're absolutely yeah. dead. Um, I know that like that's their answer to well, we didn't put hard boundaries on some of the yeah. maps, so we put like fake fake snipers that don't exist and exponentially increasing damage. You know, so that you can't just like run out here. They should do something else about that. Yeah. Um. But um, but yeah, like I don't know, or make it so that the landmines. If you look down and you see a, a a dark spot, then you at least go from being careless to then being like, oh fuck, and you kind of slow yeah. tiptoe around. And, you know, there's something you can do. Um, yeah, but uh, uh, circling back to that whole thing, just like the game is so much better when you give people options because yes, when you give people options, they can learn. They can be better, and the better players will win, and you can adapt. Yeah. It's not making it easier. Yes, I agree. To make it so that to make it you know like to make it so that you can outplay somebody else to give you more options to outplay somebody exactly. else. That means if you do that, that means you're better than the other person in that engagement, right? Yeah. Like at that, you you played that better than them. Um, making th you know, giving you options and and giving you. I mean, yeah, it, it goes back to the whole thing around like if the time to kill was thirty minutes, yeah. it took, then the best player would win ninety nine percent of the time. Yes, yeah, because it, it smooths out that like that curve of it's yeah. not just a coin flip. It's if you're you know if you're at advantage every time you flip that coin, that advantage it compounds and compounds and compounds and compounds. The better player is going to win. Yep. Um, you know, so hundred percent. So yeah, I, I think there's a lot of a lot of cool things they can do there. Yeah, like turning yeah, like you said, turning them more into a utility. The impact nades, maybe some of the GL rounds, 
blacked the leg, maybe gave you a fracture. There's there's a response you as the player can have and still outwit your opponent, maybe. But you're obviously in the position of power if you've got a good throw, impact nade throw on somebody. You know what I mean? But just do what I do and die to a normal AI scav way before you get yeah, in, a, in a fight with PMC. Way PMCs. before you get close to a PMC. I don't I don't die to any of that stuff because I get <laughs> one tapped by the yeah. garage guy from named Chris Kyle. <laughs> Now, uh, on other news, uh, I guess CES is going on. Did you see NVIDIA announce the DLSS, which we knew was happening because, like, Nikita accidentally leaked it a while ago? Um, yeah, and I've learned a bunch, actually, about DLSS. It's so funny how all of these things, because I was doing the AI stuff. Yeah. And doing the AI stuff, I also, and I also have professional experience with neural networks and, um, and machine learning. Okay. Which is all the stuff underlying DLSS. DLSS, yeah. Um, but then also was doing the graphics stuff with the pixelation on Tarkov streams or whatever. So like, all all this stuff is all coming, yeah. you know, combining. Um, I have no idea what it's going to be. Nobody yeah. knows what it's going to be until we get there and someone does some testing. It might not make a difference it might make a huge difference it might yeah. make a difference for low-end machines yeah. only it might make a difference for high-end machines only yeah no, who nobody knows and only as long as it doesn't gpus just can worse. do it right i don't even know it's nvidia it's I an mean, nvidia, so nvidia thing but isn't even isn't it even like you need a the tensor cores in the 20s yes. and yeah, 20s yeah, yeah. and 30s yeah yeah um i don't yeah 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 i don't remember exactly i forget like which models yeah. you know is it like the ti that has the tensor cores i don't remember exactly don't remember the specifics either. but but yeah but i'm excited for the opportunity to get some more frames you know what i mean like that's dude the dream the dream is just being able to hold down 120 at 1440p that's oh that's the dream bro <laughs> good luck that's the dream do, do, do you get do you get the messages that i do where someone comes in it's always like first time chatter it's like dude i've got a 1080 ti and like an i6 and I can't get more than like 70 frames. Oh, I'm yeah. literally shoot I'm really shooting for, you know, hitting my 144. I'm like, bro, the fucking dudes at CERN at yeah. the Large Hadron Collider, they're running Tarkov there and it's getting 82 yeah, FPS dude, barely at Google's quantum 1K. computer is getting yeah, exactly, exactly. 90. I, I get 70 frames. Like 70 frames is pretty much like 78 to 80 is pretty much the max I get on any map yeah. at this point now. And I've got you know, again, I don't have like the greatest build in the world, but it's probably higher than 90 something yeah. percent of the population of planet Earth. Yeah. No, I mean, and exactly. It struggles. 5900 so. X and uh, 3090. And that's all that computer does is game. And I get like 70 to 80 frames. Factory and labs is frame frame city, bro. You know what I mean? But what resolution do you play at? 1440p. And then what are, are what are your settings at like generally? Uh, medium, like I okay, I, yeah. I, I def- put everything on ultra. Yeah, yeah. I definitely don't go through and, and turn everything off, but I I restricted a few of the things to try and find like a middle ground of performance. You know what I mean? I don't I don't notice much of a difference. It's like one of those things like when the game gets kind of framey and shitty feeling. Yeah, that happens to me whether I'm at one twenty or whether I'm at a hundred yeah. or whether I'm at sixty. It's like the it's. It's like there, there's a difference between 60 frames smooth and yes. 60 frames stuttery. Like sometimes the, your frames are high, but it still feels shitty. Like yeah, when you yeah, get yeah. stutters and, and those kinds of things. So to me, I much prefer to be at 70 and have everything look really fucking nice. You know, especially with yeah. SSR and the reflections look fucking unbelievable. Um, Dude, SSR is so nice. Yeah. It's a shame that, you know, the people that play at like 720 on their home machine and then they only watch the twitch streams i wish you guys could see there's no way for me to show you guys i mean i guess i could screenshot it yeah and then like send it over discord or something but on youtube and over twitch it's like night and fucking day what i see versus what you guys see uh yeah yeah. youtube is better youtube is a little bit better because if you upload a youtube video in 1440p you get um a different compression thing you get av1 it's a different encoder yeah. yeah and i record like i don't know what bit rate you record in a um, hundred thousand yeah i record in like ninety five thousand bit rate so my youtube videos are much better than my twitch stream because you know what i mean twitch is like 936p or whatever and you know six you know 7800 bit rate which yeah. did you see that like random uh picture 
uh, like like the official Twitch like UK account posted a picture and it was like some random thing and it said new year new res and the picture said 4k and I have no idea I have no idea what that means they didn't I don't know I don't know what it means what I'm hoping it means is they've figured out I think it's AV1 like I know that they've been working on uh so they must also then be giving us more than six or eight K for a bit rate. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. So like Epos, Epos Vox did a bunch of content on this, uh, like a year ago, man, like a year to 16 months ago, Twitch at an event with NVIDIA showed off a stream that was 1440 P 120 frames. They're playing COD or Rainbow Six Siege at eight K bit rate. And they were talking about the, like, Instead of, you know, bogging down and giving everybody 30k bit rate, we're just reinventing what you can do with 8k bit rate. And they were like working with NVIDIA. And huh. this was this been this thing. I mean, like I've seen the footage. Like ePostbox did a few videos on it, and they've been working on that for forever. So okay, so you think like it might be a they're not going to change the cap. They're just going to make the or they or they or raise the cap to 8k or 10k. As whereas YouTube, you can stream at like 30k. You know what I mean? So they might bump yeah. it up a little bit and then give maybe partners or, or give us access to that new uh, compression codec or something. I don't know. That seems more likely to me than them just like unrestricting. You know what I mean? They've stuck at 6K for so long, which is like weird. Uh, but yeah, the dream, huh. the, the dream of being able to play Tarkov in 1440p, 120 frames per second and stream in 1440p, 120 frames per second. Maybe it'll happen in my lifetime. I don't think it's necessarily going to happen soon, but maybe it'll I'd happen. Be, I'd be fine with 60. For sure. FPS. But you it know, would just I, be I, insane. I care, I, I care less about the frame rate that I'm sending. Uh... <sighs> when it comes to the stream then yeah than i mean I do, like the resolution and everything yeah. um but uh you know you were saying were you, you were gonna ask me did you see the video and you have a question or, or you I, haven't seen it yet i haven't seen it yet i saw that you posted it and i was wondering if it was like if it was a tarkov thing like if you actually found settings that you could change to make it easier or if it's just like a you're, there, i mean you're, there you're are just settings. explaining it <laughs> and it's yeah no there, there are settings that i mean like that there are things you could theoretically yeah. do um, to like alter the output, yeah. obviously, right? Um, I'll leave that up to the million settings videos that people have and yeah. everything. But ultimately, yeah, no, the the the, the video that I did um, just for a quick backstory um, is called um, "Why Grass Ruins Tarkov Streams," um, and then the thumbnail says "Tarkov Stream Pixelation," um, and I basically just explain the answer is it has to do with the way images are compressed and how they're I, and i walk through like the jpeg algorithm yeah and chunks of how the math works and all of the cool little things yep. there and and ultimately how at the fundamental level um jpeg works on eight by eight pixel squares mm. and it processes those in bits so what happens is if you end up with if you zoom in, which I do, I zoom way in on all these pictures and you see on woods, it's like, you know, 64 different, completely different discrete shades of oh. blue green. Um, so what it has to do, because it can't fit all that information into each individual frame and then every frame, because you're running around and the trees are moving, it there's no motion compensation it can do because every every image is a completely new image, right? Yeah. And I, sh I show like my webcam, right? If I'm do this, what what the the video compression is doing uh, as I fucking wave my hands here is it's basically saying on frame zero, here's your whole frame. On frame one, all the shit around me, my yes. body. It says, Leave it alone. It says that's all repeated. Just keep what you have. And then it says your hand, all these pixels. It doesn't redraw everything. It says all of these pixels get moved over at this vector f between these frames, yeah. which then means they don't have to send all that information, right? So there's so much inter-frame redundancy, and yeah. then there's so much they can compress within the frame um, because it's like there's not crazy gradients and all kinds of stuff going on, whereas in woods, 
every pixel is a different color. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It's indistinguishable from if it was just lights flickering randomly yes. on and off in different colors. So it has to send the entire picture every, every frame. time. Yeah. And then also, if you're if you wanted to stream in 1080, you need three megabits. Sorry, three gigabits per second in data. But instead, you have six kilobits. Yep. So it's it's six thousand versus three million. Yep. So what but what ends up happening because it does that block processing is it has a bunch of different shades of green and it the the end result the output is like an average of all of those greens in kind of a gradient where it's like dark green for the top 8 a little bit darker for the bottom 8 a little bit darker for the next 8 a little bit darker so you have like what looks like a smudged green gradient but now every single block of 8 pixels on the whole picture is a square and it's crazy. I guarantee it's like not something you ever noticed. Like people look and they're like, oh yeah, it looks pixelated. Yeah. But you can literally see if you zoom in eight by eight pixel blocks where it's green and then a bluish and then a green that's and then so a bluish. Funny. You can see the macro blocking, and that's literally what happens. Yeah. You pop a painkiller and it ups the contrast. Oh my god. And all that does is make the image even less compressible, yeah. which makes the problem worse. So yeah. it, and it's it has nothing to do with Tarkov specifically, it just so no. happens that Tarkov outdoor environments are so chaotic, they move so quickly, and they change so much, and there's no repetition. And um, no other game has, like, a sharpening filter that gets applied 50, yeah. per, you know what I mean? Like, on or off, and so it's it's bad. Which I think fundamentally is why Twitch and NVIDIA were working on, as opposed to, like, the journey to allowing people three gigabits per second of bandwidth for it. It's just like, can we make the compression better? You know what I mean? Can we make it smarter or whatever? And I'm way too dumb to know what all of that means. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of cool shit that they could do. I even, I even mentioned something like that um, because, you know, and I explained why it has nothing to do with green, why it's not special to Tarkov at the end. I answered yeah. a bunch of questions um, as well as, um, Fuck, I forgot what I was going to say. What the hell were we just talking about? Like, uh, that's why they're trying to invent a new compression thing. Like, were you talking oh, about right. some of the... One of the so one of the questions was, why if it's if it's the the wilderness, like the trees, then why does your face cam get blurry? The answer to that is just because it's one image. It's part of now the image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what ends up happening is, imagine there's a slider and that quality, it's like, oh shit, there's so much data. Yes. So every frame needs to get jacked down to 1%. Yeah, which includes your your webcam. But I said, like, you know, there's a conceivable future where they build a stream specific encoder that can basically say oh. compress heavily everything around what they can use heuristics to figure out is a webcam image. Interesting. And then process that separately. That would be um, nutty because they already do that in like movies and all kinds of other stuff when most of the scenes are. A person in a room talking. Yeah. So that a lot of a lot of the encoders, they know the bright, high contrast shit in the foreground is more often than not what everyone's looking at. So uh... so everything in the background, it's why if you ever look at the darkest parts of videos, like all the black, you'll yeah. see you'll see like, like the, the staircasing banding, and stuff the like that. Yeah. That's because it's like none of this is important. Yeah. And the problem is, is that really the detail, the dynamic range there, there might be a hundred pixels and it goes from, you know, black value of a hundred percent to black value of one percent actually. But so, but it's not a hundred pixels, it's 20 pixels. Yeah. So it has to basically say like, I'm supposed to represent a hundred colors, but I only have 20 boxes to do it in. So what it says is round it out and make it so yeah. that it's black and then 20% more black. So that's where you get the stepping and the banding and everything. It's also um, but not in the foreground. Like uh, on live TV and stuff like that at sports events, like at the end when they blow all the confetti, the compression, like the it feels like the quality of your TV goes down, and that's because it can't. All, like you didn't realize, like you were saying earlier, all of the stuff. It was like that stayed the same. Don't re, you know, that stayed the same. That stayed the same. Well, now when your screen is full of confetti, every every inch of your screen is changing every image, so it's having to recreate that, and the quality just goes. Down. It's, it's indistinguishable from if you were to have 60 frames per second and every frame was there's a full picture of a dog. The next one is a waterfall. The next one is a fucking close up of a Ferrari. The next one, like yeah, every frame yeah, is a different yeah. picture. It, there's nothing it can do other than send 60 
pictures that it compresses as best as it can. Yeah. You know, whereas otherwise, um, it's crazy, dude. I, I, I literally show the information about that eight by eight block and I show how uncompressed they have to, sh they represent the pixels as eight bit binary numbers with RGB. So it's one, 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 zero, one, 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 zero, one, comma, one, 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 zero, one, one, comma, one, one. So that, that, and that represents one pixel, one pixel is the RGB, the three colors in, you know, eight, eight and eight numbers, right? Yeah. For, and then do that for 64. Yeah. That's a lot of numbers, right? And then I show after the compression, it's like the data is minus 24, one, seven, three, and then the end is, and then 53 zeros. It doesn't, it yeah. doesn't send, it doesn't send 53 zeros. It says 53 X zero. So it's like seven numbers compared to 64 times eight times three. And that's yeah. just a eight by eight pixel block of what a two K stream, a four K yeah, stream. Exactly. Like, it's insane. Yeah. How much detail is just the, the technology we have is already insane. You know what I mean? Like the fact that we can do this live stream, stuff like that. And the, and it, the fact that we're on the cusp of it all getting better is insane. Go to Photoshop with a really nice looking JPEG of whatever export that look at the size of it on disc and then do the same thing, but take the, take the slider and the JPEG quality and turn it to 1%. Yeah. And you'll see it's it's shaved off 80% of the data. And when you're looking at it, you'll be fucked if you can really tell a difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless if you, you really zoom pay in. attention, unless you zoom in, you know, but yeah. otherwise it's like, oh, shit, I really can't tell the difference. Yeah, 100%. Because 100%. We, there's so much information that we just don't even perceive. And then there's all sorts of information that is just fucking completely redundant. Yep. Um, yep. So yeah, I, I that was a fun video to make, and I think it's fascinating. And I think it every fucking person should watch the video, dude. Not I, for the ad revenue, but and I find for the it fascinating. Revenue. Yeah, as somebody who like worked in video, like in photography yep. and video, you know what I mean. Like I dealt with that, but with like B raw and you know ProRes and all of the you know videography codecs and stuff like that. Um. <clears throat> I wrote on here, I was going to talk about Lighthouse loot. I was just, I don't know if you've done a lot of Lighthouse, but the loot is OP. Like, it's I've like. Still not, I've still not done another Lighthouse dude. run since I did five in a row and got it's, just lasered through buildings. It's two different labs, but it's free. <laughs> like, like the, the water treatment plant and the, uh, the water treatment plant and the train yard above. Is like has like as much loot as labs does <laughs> if you don't have any keys because I don't and then the chalets a, you're talking about PMC yeah and then the chalets and the village has as much loot as labs has <laughs> but it's free. so it's exp insane, explain bro <laughs> explain something to me because again I haven't really had much practice and I don't pay attention to like yeah how to not cheese the Raiders but like how to play around them mm -hmm. you know I, I stupidly i'm under the impression that they have you know realistic senses so that but which just means you control. can't do so i don't understand and i haven't watched any gameplay of mm -hmm. anybody playing how the fuck do you play it because here's what happens yeah. i i'll creep in to the corner and i'll see you know a bunch of raiders over whatever a bunch of roads yeah. i mean over here like just patrolling and then i'll see like a dude on the machine gun like looking off in the distance and as soon as I pull the trigger and get that one headshot, I have four seconds to live. Yeah. How, yeah. how, how do you fucking do it? <laughs> how do you, you, I don't understand. Like, so do you just wait until they're aggroing some other poor schmuck and then you kill them? Because <laughs> no, they, can a, they can only aim bot one person at a time. It's a lot like labs in the sense that like, if you, like you as somebody who's played a ton of labs and versus somebody on their first Versus somebody that's put 4,000 hours of Tarkov in, but never played labs and never even like seen the Raider. You know what I mean? There's a lot that you know about them that helps you. Like, you know, roughly how many spawn. So if you kill two, you're not going to start looting. You know what I mean? You know that like, like kind of how they move. So you wouldn't consider yourself Veritas like somebody who goes into labs and cheeses the Raiders. You know what I mean? Like you fight them, but there's a lot of information you have just from experience that, that informs the decisions you make. Similarly, 
I now, after playing a ton of Lighthouse, like know that like the North building spawns three on the roof, the West building spawns two, and the East building spawns two. I know what direction the GLs and the machine guns are facing. And I know that if I stand here, he can't turn the gun around. So he'll either get up to aggro me, or if he stays on the gun, I have line of sight on him. I know that in that the helicopter, and it's kind of a big area, but three will spawn there. And I know that at the north building on the ground, four will spawn. And so, so now I know I, you go, you got to pick a spot and you work out to in. Uh, I've been trying to get my sniper skill leveled. So I have been loving getting the new Schmittenbender like two to eight. You put the range finder on top, so when you ADS, you can see the range. And uh, on the east side of the map, <coughs> there's a, a huge rock formation. There's some mines, but there's this huge rock formation where on a clear day, you can see every single rogue on all of the roofs. And Can they shoot you? Yes. <laughs> yes. So you basically, like, it's it's kind of fun. You, I mean, knowing where they are, you, you like, you set up and you got a pixel peek. The ones that are like on the building close, I know there's going to be one on this gun, boom. And I know there's going to be one on that gun. If I miss that shot, I know he's going to get up and run around the roof. So I need to kill him. What I liked, I know that their AI is broken, but I like that they made this change. It used to be if you killed one on a gun, the other one would just sit on his gun no matter what. Uh, if if the rogues are now aggroed onto you, he'll get up from his machine gun and move to the one where the guy died. So you can't just kill the guy and be like, I never have to worry about that. Now it, their aim is still broken and dumb. But so mm. like, yeah, because my, my experience with them is always it's always been. If I see them there, they are, are either shooting at me yeah. and I have a nanosecond to, re to react yeah. or they're literally not looking at me and I have four hours to line up a shot. Yeah. But then as soon as I start to move in. I'm like sneaking and whatever, and I but and I hear nothing and I see nothing until I hear Swajili, and then there's three dudes full sprint running yeah. around at me, and I don't care who you are. No, you don't have enough time to go head tap, head tap, head tap. No. So you just you just have to mouse one, and and because there's nowhere you can like in labs, the way that I fight the raiders is like. I'm on the, the cusp of like a doorway. Mm -hmm. So in order to disengage is one step. Yeah. But everywhere I end up fighting the rogues, there's nowhere to disengage to because yeah. you're always just being like in, in the water treatment plant. There's all of those little round things yeah. where if I creep in, all of a sudden there's three dudes all around me and I can't no. fight them. I can't see them. I can't shoot them. You have to work out. You have to work outside to in. So like like you can get like there's two or three different positions on like the north, west, and east, where you can snipe all the ones on the roof. Um, there are a few different routes you can take if you don't want to snipe all floor, where you can like hug the wall and like you can get that one. And then you know the other one, you can get in the building. So the other one can't shoot you down into the building. And then you can kind of peek, hit, hit the uh, machine gunner up top. Uh, like I said, three will spawn by the helicopter in the middle, and then four will spawn at the northernmost building on the ground. And then the two at the southwest checkpoint, that like where you can just like walk in, uh, the yeah. two up there. They're the ones that you can kill and loot. And either eliminating the ones on the roofs, because like that's the, you can't, you cannot go inside that water treatment plant without being confident they're all dead on the roofs. All of them. Because, oh, I go in there, but that's my mistake. And the few times I've been in there, exactly. I'll like kill one sniper and then creep into the building exactly. and it's like, I have it all to myself. And then all of a sudden you're surrounded and we're like, well, you're I You're surrounded died. or if you're outside from the other buildings, they GL you. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, yeah. so you don't have to snipe. You can go in with a red dot. You can go in with like a Valde on an AK. You know what I mean? You can do it. But there's like, you, you basically work outside to in. Um, and there's like routes you can take where you don't have to worry about the ones in by the helicopter. You just kind of like pick this guy off the roof, pick this guy off the roof. Now I know that I'm... I, I, it's at least just me versus these four on the ground. I don't have to worry about being GL'd from the other side. Now I pick this person off the roof. Well, now if I'm a solo player, I can just loot these four rogues and take the car extract, which is right behind me. And I cleared it because I already took the guys off the, the roof here. You know what I mean? So there's there's routes you can take like I've that. Ne I, I've never looted a rogue, actually, now that I think about it. I've really? killed a few on like the machine guns because they're easy to kill. Yeah. 
if they're not shooting at you. But yeah, yeah I don't think I've managed they're to actually, actually loot one. ridiculously balanced. Class four rigs a lot of the time. A lot of scars, um, but the scars aren't that great, to be honest with you. Every no. once in a while you get a hex grid. Every once in a while you get one full with like 762 BP. They're really balanced. For somebody who the past few days has been like borderline farming them, like you don't you don't come out with slicks and X fills and nine nine five every raid. Like so here's a question for you balanced. about about the the rogues as you know someone who's at least compared to me a fucking yeah. expert on it one of the things that i hear a lot um oh and i just i started up the game and and added myself to the queue because i figure we're going to be ending yeah, here yeah, soon yeah. And so if you're going to be playing i would rec recommend you start the yeah, queue if you're not I already i just did the same thing um so if you think about like the skill and the decision making and the tactics and the strategy, right? A lot of people will say, I like I like the rogues because they they require strategy and all yeah. this other stuff. And so I'm not gonna say anything to that other than what you just described sounds like a lot of knowledge and strategy and whatever, but I I wanna know your your opinion on whether or not you feel like it's like the good kind of strategy no. or you've learned the one way in which not exploit but like to take yeah. advantage of their blind spots but not it seems to me like they're if they were better designed 100 there would be an infinite number of different ways to do what you did and it would be different every time as opposed to r rinse and repeat 100%. like I do on labs. I completely, I was literally talking about this on stream the other day. It is cool. really fun to be successful on Lighthouse. It is really fun, really, really fun. Some of the most refreshingly fun I've ever had, sniping, clearing the entire roofs, moving in, clearing the ones on the floor, looting up. It is some of the most fun I've had in Tarkov. But undoubtedly i would change it in a heartbeat they should be way less accurate and way more reactive the ones yeah. the ones by the helicopter will never move away from the helicopter they'll either kill you from 300 i mean and i'm not even exaggerating bro i got a i got a range finder on my sniper scope i'm on this dude's head and he's 287 meters away he's either gonna one tap me with a red dot first shot or I'm gonna snipe him. You know what I mean? If I miss my shot, he'll run over here. And then if I miss my shot, he'll run over here. I'd love it if those guys were like hunker down and they like went in a building and they never and came they could, out. And they could reposition yes. or do all kinds of stuff. Or if they yeah. ran, you know what I mean? And <laughs> grouped up with the, the group of four. Now it's a group of seven. Oh my God, that's so much more of a big deal now that there's seven and not just four. Like, absolutely. It's, I 100%, I it's like the lightest form of cheesing possible. But the reason that it's okay is because it's required. Because like if you don't like if you don't know if you're an them, idiot and you play like me, you're gonna you die. Yeah, there is no there is no fair fight with them. There is no really fun, really reactive. They reposition, so I had to reposition. They you know like called out. You know what I mean? Like because they're they're Usex, they're English, right? You know it'd be funny if they were like yeah. you two flank and two of them ran away. Like there's nothing like that. You know exactly what they're gonna do, and it's just do I pixel peak them good enough? So like that, that's good to know. I'm, I'm in I, the I, middle. It's the most fun I've had in Tarkov in a really long time, but it's broken, just as broken as the rest of the AI, and I would change it in a heartbeat. Yeah, and and I ask the, the reason why I ask it like that is because my gut reaction when I when 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 folks tell me I like them because they require skill and whatever. Yeah, I, I have two completely opposite feelings. One is bullshit they don't require <laughs> yeah, yeah. like they, they, there's a difference between requiring planning quote unquote mm -hmm. and requiring planning like mm -hmm. you know if if someone does the same thing every single time you could say that in order to to beat them you have to develop a strategy and learn how mm -hmm. to react to them and whatever that is not the same as like another world where you know, they're all the good things that we yeah, talk correct. about. Um, so, yeah, I basically am trying to figure out, like, is it because am I just bad? And I think the answer is 
I'm just stubborn in that, like, I don't want to yeah. have to do, like, I want to play it my way. No, I get but, it. But there's no way to play it my way. No. It's a losing way, and but it shouldn't be a losing way. You're right. I was, I was, okay. so I was filming uh, my, the video I posted today was my Lighthouse Map Guide, and I was filming a bunch of B roll. So it was just an offline raid. And I was like taken aback multiple times at like the beauty of this map. It's awesome. And one of those times I was walking through the water treatment plant and I was thinking to myself, I hate that I'll never walk through the water treatment plant like this in a raid. Yeah. Like you're you the whole middle, the helicopter and all that stuff. You, you rarely ever go in there because you can't, because if you go in there, you're dead. And it, if you go in the middle, you're dead. And if you've cleared the rogues enough that you can go in the middle, you have enough loot from clearing them that you should leave. So you never go in the middle there and you're never using all that cover or like crawling under the crawl spaces. There's a firing range in Lighthouse right in the middle. There's this thing you can hop over a wall and sunk underwater. Down. There's water around it and there's targets and it's like you're never I got stuck there for 40 minutes <laughs> I couldn't move because the whole time I was there yeah. MG fire was coming in and then the, and then there were raiders on the other side above the yeah. wall and all I could do was I take out a grenade and I would like lob it kind of over yeah. the wall and the moment it left my hand I would hear five steps of footsteps being grenade running away and it was like you don't know that yeah. like yeah yeah um so yeah I, I there's there's really one way quote unquote to sort of play that when yeah, there's it would one be so much more enjoyable if there was an infinite number of ways, yes. but all of those ways involved being smart like you are, you just had to be smart to find the one fucking way to do yeah. it. Yeah, there's, there's one way to do it, and there's 10 different ways you can execute that way. There's like one strategy, which is like yeah. eliminate the rogues on top that are going to line of sight you, kill everyone else, and loot. Now, you can do that strategy from the north or from the east or from the west or on the floor or from the sniping, but at the end of the day, it's like, you got to take out the roof guys first. Then you know exactly where everyone else is going to spawn. And you choose to either move on them or loot up and get out. And that's the strat, yeah. man. That's it. And the reason people are like, oh, it requires so much strategy is because it's new strategy, right? We know how to kill scavs and we know that they're going to cheat and kill us. We know how to kill the bosses. We know all, each of their strategies and we know how to kill the raiders. And so it's new and it feels it's, so refreshing but it's a lie it's it's they're cheating it's the it. same reason why everybody was excited when scav started looting guns yes and when they wiggled it's like oh my god it's so amazing that now we can't tell the difference for the first week and then now you can, the only yes. people that wiggle at you are ai scavs yes. and every time you see them and if you see someone insta one any look at you and dead in the eyes and start drinking now you it's like now you it's the opposite yes um yes yeah so it's like, yeah, somebody said, how do you mark the helicopter for that quest if you can't get in there? You have to kill them you, all. <laughs> you have to kill all eight on the roofs and the two there and the three by the helicopter, and then you can do the helicopter quest. It's so, so yes. So like I'm having more fun than I've ever had playing Tarkov doing this, but like even yesterday on stream, I was acknowledging that. Like it's a lie. It's a trick. I'm going to get used to it, and the AI should just be better. And then yeah. that that experience I was telling you about with geeks, that could be every raid. You know what I mean? It could be that they do they did something different. They reacted to how many of us there were. They whatever. And now, now every time I feel like I worked for it. Like that raid we we extracted, and I was like, we worked for that. Uh, and every raid can feel that way. But right now, it's really fun. And then it just it's gonna get it's gonna get that way. Just like the. It's I feel some weird like parallel between this and uh, like the speed running stuff. If you play the mm. same level a billion times and you get so good at it, that's one particular type of skill. There are other people that do what's called randomizer where other people make almost like community modded like levels and maps. And that's when you see some of the most crazy, most skilled players Interesting. that can go to something they've never seen before and play amazingly. Yeah. It might only be 90% as good, but it's 90% as good on the first try, yes. not 100% wow. with the same thing That's repeated over great, and over and over and over and over again. That's such a great... Like, I, I know enough about speedrunning because you and me have talked about it. So, like, that is such a great analogy, is that the best players in Escape from Tarkov, not the best, like, mechanically, but, like, the best, like, with the vision, exactly like, like you were saying, like, you wanted to go in and clear this place out but the game doesn't let you because it's like and react set and up. improvise yes it's and set up that way 
and I think that the game wants to be what how you wanted to play it and how I want to play that map. I imp, imp, improvisational and reacting to the environment around us. The, I mean, the whole point of the game, like the same, the the same reason that there aren't solo queues is the reason the AI is broken, or is the reason the AI should be fixed. Rather, they want it to be random. They want and, it to uh, be yeah. random, and they want you to never know what experience you're about to walk into. And with the AI. That's the exact opposite. You they're, know exactly. they're, they're deterministic. Yeah. There's only a few decisions they can make, so the funnel always results in the same like two or three outcomes. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and it's and it's it's a flow it's, chart it's, when you play Lighthouse. It's like, oh, did I miss that shot? Now I just have to do this because I know he's gonna go there, and then I did, like it's just like, and then you just... dude, I I've like started to recreate the behavior logic of the the scavs in Escape from Tarkov. <laughs> you, you can like follow it through. I want to do this for the video, and That's I want to make funny. the you can, and it's like. It's like a tree with like four nodes and like and then it splits off into like two or three nodes over here and two or three nodes. There's like 11 leaves in this tree. Yeah. And then you look at the I don't know if you've ever seen what the image is for. Um, was it Splinter Cell or one of those other games? Um, the Division, maybe. OK, where the behavior tree, I swear to God, there's like 80,000. That's things. awesome. And, the, and they actually have like a debug visual where when you see. In AI, like run and crouch and shoot and throw a grenade, you can see almost like neurons in a brain how it starts to oh, go down through the tree cool. and splits off and goes off like. And the developers use that to debug and stuff. And it's it's like that's how they get all this complex stuff. And and scavs in Tarkov are walk back and forth, and then after thirty seconds, do the next action randomly picked from a bag of look at uh. look up, eat whatever, and then when you see player. It's either shoot them on site or yeah. run to cover and then shoot them on site or reload, shoot them on site. It's Dude. like the simplest fucking shit ever. Um, oh my God. That would and be I so want that sick. crazy yeah. tree of a million possible different scenarios rather than uh, it would create... rather than memorize the one path that is the solution. Yeah. And then those are, you know, the best players. And, and honestly, I've heard it from enough people. Enough people are, I think, you know, mistaken or wrong about it where i start to think like am i have i just not cracked the code yet you know and it's yeah. like it, i just have the wrong mindset uh, you yeah. know i'm too stubborn to like learn the way to play because yeah. i don't want to so i mean that that makes me feel better and that yeah. like i'm oh, not sure. the worst fucking tarkov player in the world and everybody else has figured it out and i'm just bad and if you do figure it out if you do choose to learn it it's fun it's a new experience for tarkov and that's fun as somebody who's played all the experiences now going back to the loot south of the water treatment plant there's like a village there's like a shanty town and then a village and then further south of that is the two big chalets you could mm -hmm. play Lighthouse and literally intentionally never set foot anywhere near the water treatment plant and make hundreds of millions of rules. There's if you like the essentially scav gameplay of walk between every house, loot the things where the good loot is. Yeah. Maybe have some combat in between, but um, but it's good. It that's the thing is like yeah. it's it that feels good and there's a lot more. If you're a PMC, like if you're a scav, normally when you spawn in, all the PMCs have already looted that up, fought, or they're like at the water treatment plant. Like as a PMC, if you like learn where the locations of those chalets are and move there, there is, a, I mean, it's 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 the only other thing to do because the map is so vertical. You know what I mean? Like if you spawn at the south end, this isn't your rogue run, right? You go to the chalets because that's where the loot is. So like it's, a, it's good PVP. Yeah. in those areas and then if you win it's a bonus because you get their stuff and the bitcoin the pro kill the vertex the military cofdm and the intel it's like sweet yeah, yeah. you know what i mean so like it's it's good pvp too uh there i can't not i can't not go north to the rogues oh, and then insta die Believe so that's me, why i've like missed out on fun, the fucking yeah but uh but yeah it's it's uh it's super fun it's there's no ex there's no doubt that it's all it all pales in comparison to that potential that you were talking about a, a a truly intelligent ai like pales in comparison but as a new experience to tarkov it's a lot of fun there's a lot of money to be made and uh yeah it's just good it's just fun um well, maybe i'll give light i have like 957 lighthouse <laughs> quests i've been i've been there's slowly so many, like, yeah there's so yeah I, i've got 60 quests in my list right now 
and yeah. I just slowly like one is customs and I like knock that off and then I do like one or two shoreline and then I knock that off and it's like I've just been fucking procrastinating yeah. on doing any lighthouse tasks. Yeah, there's there's and there's a healthy amount in the water treatment plant too. You got to mark stuff in there. You got to go find data in there. There's a lot out too, like marking a bunch of stuff out by the lighthouse and stuff. Go but, find in a bunch of shacks. But there's I mean, a it's just going to be amount. me going to the wiki and one by one yeah. doing so. each... I won't be able to do this shit that I like to do, which is like do four or five quests all at once on customs because I know I can go to 202, 303, 216, and whatever. Yeah. Go from here to here to here to here and you know be super efficient about it. Is no. this going to be like have the wiki page up and look at it 17 times with the map yeah. and with the compass to mark the house and then die yeah. and then, you know, whatever. Yeah. Or um, bring nine markers. You know what I mean? Your entire cam is full of markers because there's so many quests to mark stuff. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but it's fun. Um, but yeah, so that's it. I mean, we can talk that that last few things like we can talk about, you know, like maybe next week there's, you know, we still have the drops event going on. There's still a lot of that love going around and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, the drops event is still going on. It's coming to a close. I think Saturday, Saturday is the last day. Everybody has drops and, uh, yeah, that'll be fun. And then the drops will be over. I finally got a military corrugated hose, so I got a good drop. Finally, finally. I don't even, I don't even like do drops. Finally, I got I drops like I think for my own stream. I don't know if that works, but <laughs> I got I got a bottle of water. Yeah, that's what so far what I've gotten from drops, and I yeah I just don't really, I can't be bothered to. No, yeah, they're they're fine. Uh, but yeah, so um, uh, that's it. Thank you guys for. Thank you guys for hanging with us. This was another good one. Um, back to the normal schedule. Christmas, New Year's, drops, wipe. That kind of like wrecked us as far as like we missed a few. We did one on Monday this yeah. week. Like, I want to revisit maybe. I've, I've, I've gotten a second wind on wanting to see if I can get Nikita back here maybe like next month or something. Dude, come on, I've got, bro. He's been, you know, he's been just so awesome and receptive and 100%. talking to me about all these things that. I don't know. I wait until drops is over. Wait until yes. you know maybe he takes a little bit of a rest, and then I want to ask him again. And yeah, I would love to. I, I would love to have him on. And because the last one was so good, we don't present information to him in like a pushy way, but we get to do it in a way that's so different than just like DMs, where like we get to talk about like this experience, why it's core to him, why he wants it in the game, and then what the reality. We pulled of that out experience. the information yeah. that he like doesn't know he wants to tell exactly. us you know what I mean? yeah exactly yeah. so so it was fun and i think that would be dope i think that'd be dope so um but yeah we'll so thanks for everyone hanging out live um this will be live on all the platforms early next week and uh we will definitely see you on the next one peace